Hello everyone. Now we are starting a new lesson that will deal with drainage system of India. In this, we will be first dealing with the Indus River system. Uh, I am Bhumika Saini. I have done my engineering from NIT Jaipur. Uh, you can follow me on an academy by following this link. An academy courses are free of cost, but if you like the course, you can for, uh, pay a voluntary fee by uh, going on the contribute link on an academy website. Now, uh, the drainage system of India can be studied under the following heads. Himalayan river system, peninsula river system and there are other uh, small flowing rivers, right? Now, in Himalayan river system, we will be studying about the Indus river system, their tributaries, left bank and right bank tributaries. Then Ganga river system, Brahmaputra river system. In peninsula rivers, we will be studying about Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri, Narmada, Tapi and their respective right bank and left bank tributaries. Now, there are other small and swift flowing rivers like Mahi, Sabarmati, Periyar, Penar, Vegai. So, these we will be studying uh, in detail. In, in the upcoming lessons. So, this is the drainage system of India. This includes the, uh, the Himalayan rivers, this one the Indus uh, river system, then this is the Gangetic river system, then this one is the Brahmaputra river system. Then these are the peninsular rivers, Narmada, Tapi, then this is the Mahanadi river system, then Godavari river system, then Krishna river system, then Kaveri river system and there are some uh, uh, small and swift flowing rivers especially along the western ghats, right. So, we will be discussing them uh, in another lesson. So, let us start with Indus river system, right. Now, the Indus, the river Indus, it originates in the Tibetan plateau, right. So, th this means that it is a transboundary river. It originates in Tibetan plateau of western China in the vicinity of Mansarovar lake, right. So, near Mansarovar lake is the origin point of Indus, right. Now, the river runs a course through Ladakh and Gilgit Baltistan region of Jammu Kashmir, right. You can see it here. Here uh, in the in the Tibetan region, it is originating, right? Then it is uh, it is flowing through the Ladakh region of India, and this one is the Gilgit Baltistan region of Jammu and Kashmir state. Okay. Now uh, it enters Pakistan and it merges into the Arabian Sea near the port city of Karachi in Sindh. So it enters here after it is entering Pakistan and it drains into Arabian Sea near the port city of Karachi. Okay. So. Then uh, this blind Indus river dolphin, this, this is a species of dolphin, it is specifically found in Indus river only, right. So, it is unique to this ecology, okay. Then Shok, Shigar, Gilgit, Kabul, Gumla, these are some of the uh, right bank tributaries and Zanskar and uh, Panjnath, Panjnath includes all the five rivers that is uh, Jhelum, Chenab, Ravi, Bias and Satluj. These are the major left bank tributaries, okay. So, in this particular lesson, we will be discussing about the right bank tributaries, okay. So, this is the classification Shok, Shigar, Gilgit, Kabul, Gumla, these are in, uh, these are not in India, these three flow in India, then Zaskar, Panjnath, these are the left bank tributaries. So, remember the right bank and the left bank tributary. So, let us discuss the right bank tributaries first, okay. So, in this first let us discuss the Shok river. Now, this river rises from Karakoram range and it flows through northern Ladakh region in Jammu Kashmir. You can see the Shok river, it is rising in the Karakoram range and it is flowing in this uh, Ladakh region in Jammu Kashmir, right. Now, you can see a small river Nubra. Nubra is a tributary of Shok, right, that is joining the Shok river. So, uh, Shok, it is rising from Karakoram range, flows to northern Ladakh region in Jammu Kashmir. It is a length of about 550 kilometer. It is a tributary of Indus river, right, uh, uh, and uh, it originates from, this is the name of the glacier, that is not much required to remember, but uh, just for your information, it, this is the glacier. Uh, from which the Shok river is originating. The river widens at the confluence with Nubra river. Now, you can see it here. That is what I told you. Nubra river, that is a tributary of Shok. Remember, Nubra is not the tributary of Indus. It is rather the tributary of Shok. Right. So, Shok river widens at the confluence with Nubra river. Right. And Shok river, it marks the southeastern fringe of Karakoram range. Right. Because it is rising from the Karakoram range only. And it forms a V-shaped bend around it. Okay, so this is about Shok River. Now, the next word Nubra, that is the tributary of Shok River. It is originating from Nubra Glacier, right? That is in the uh, Saltoro Kangri Peak, right? This is in Jammu Kashmir only. So, that there is a glacier, Nubra Glacier, uh, which is the origin point of Nubra River, which is the tributary of Shok River, right? So, Nubra River, it meanders southeast to join the Shok River, right, at the base of Ladakh Range. Now, you can see it here. This one is the Nubra River, right here we have the Ladakh range and just at the base of Ladakh range, Nubra River is joining Shok River, okay. Uh, so, uh, Nubra Valley is situated uh, from this, uh, at, at this, uh, along this Nubra River, then catchment area of Nubra River, it is devoid of vegetation, it is a desolate and bleak area, right. So, hardly any vegetation and human habitation is there due to high elevation and lack of rainfall plus extreme climatic conditions, 
okay the next one is shigar now this is a tributary of indus it's a small right bank tributary of indus river and uh, it joins in its it is in its course through ladakh region of jammu kashmir you can see it here this one this one is small right bank tributary of indus river right so this is uh, shigar okay it joins indus at skardu skardu is a town in jammu kashmir right uh, it uh, it descends down a very steep gradient uh because it is uh, flowing from a range right it rises from this hisper glacier its entire catchment area it is influenced by the action of glaciers because this whole area is glaciated okay so this is another uh, tributary of right bank tributary of indus now the uh, uh the third tributary of indus first we have discussed about shok then we discussed nubra that is the tributary of shok then we discussed uh, the, the third one that is shigar and this gilgit that is another important right bank tributary of indus river uh it joins uh indus in its course through ladakh region right again it is also originating from a glacier right in the extreme northwestern boundary of himalaya now again the here also the catchment area is bleak and desolate hardly any vegetation is found in this bunji is the main uh, human settlement along this river that's a town where uh, mainly human habitation is there then remember gizer and hunza these are the right and left bank tributaries of gilgit not of indus but of gilgit right so you can see it here see this is the gilgit um this one is the this one is the gilgit river this is gizer and this is hunza right so remember gilgit the tributary of gilgit is gizer and hunza and uh, the tributary of shok is nubra but as such the tributaries of indus are uh, right bank tributary shok then we have discussed shigar then we have discussed gilgit okay so these are the three main tributaries which are flowing in india these are the tributaries kabul and gumla they join indus in pakistan right so that much detail uh, knowledge is not that required for civil services these are the left bank tributaries zanskar and panjnath okay shok we have done nubra we have done shigar we have done and gilgit we have done right then we have gizer this is again a tributary of gilgit river right it flows eastwards to join gilgit river flowing in the in uh, flowing in from the north right the image i have already shown you entire ca catchment area again here is bleak and desolate because this is like a very extreme climatic conditions are there that's why hardly any human settlement uh, is there and also the area is devoid of vegetation okay now the last one that is hunza this is another tributary of gilgit again rising from uh, this himalayan uh, range that is uh, uh, karakoram range Uh, in the northwestern part of jammu kashmir right it flows southeast cut across through this karakoram range right and it forms a gorge downstream it is flowing in the southwesterly direction in a, in its middle course right and then uh, the, it meets the gilgit a little upstream of bunji right so as such if you see gizer uh, not gizer this gilgit gilgit actually here bunji is the main human settlement right and just near bunji this hunza river is joining gilgit river okay so these are the main uh, right bank tributaries that we have discussed in the uh, in this particular lesson uh, the indus river origin how it is flowing right and then how it drains in arabian sea near the port city of karachi then the uh, the main right bank tributaries are shok shigar gilgit right then nubra a tributary of shok then uh, gizer and hunza a tributary of gilgit right then in the pakistan kabul and gumla river which are tributaries of indus they are joining indus in pakistan right then the left bank tributaries are zaskar and this whole panjnath you can see it here this is the left bank tributary zaskar and this whole panjnath is these, these two are the left bank tributary these will discuss in another lesson okay so i hope it's clear to you the indus river its main course plus the right bank tributaries of indus okay thank you hello everyone this is part 2 of indus river system in the uh, last lesson we have discussed about the right bank tributaries of indus in this we will be discussing about the left bank tributaries of indus i am bhumika saini i have done my engineering from nit jaipur you can follow me on an academy by following this link an academy courses are free of cost but if you like the course you can pay a voluntary fee by following the contribute link on an academy now i have told you in the last lesson that the drainage system in india are classified into himalayan river system peninsula river system and other small and swift flowing rivers so uh, first of all we are discussing himalayan river system and in himalayan river system we are discussing the indus river system okay now indus i had already told you in the last class that it originates in the uh, tibetan region right and it runs to ladakh and gilgit baltistan region of jammu kashmir and it drains in arabian sea near the port city of karachi 
right? There's a species that is unique of this particular river ecology that is blind Indus river dolphin and these are the right and the left bank tributaries. Uh, you can see it here. This we have already discussed, Show, Shigar, Gilgit, right? These right bank tributaries that are in India, we have already discussed. Now we'll discuss the left bank tributaries that is Zaskar and Panjanath, right? So you can see it here, Zaskar, a small river, this one. A small river that is uh, joining uh, uh, this uh, Indus River in Jammu Kashmir. Okay, so Zaskar, it's an important left bank tributary of Indus, and here human settlement, uh, settlements are sparse because of again extreme climatic condition, right? So this is the Zaskar River. It's a small river. Okay, now the main river which we have to do in the left bank tributary is the Panjnad River system. That is all these five river system: Ravi, Bias, Jhelum, Chenab, Satluj. Right. So let's discuss each of them. Okay. Now in Panjnath, first we'll discuss Chenab. Now Chenab is formed by two head streams, that is Chandra and Bhaga. Right. When these two confluence at uh, Tandi, uh, that is a place in Himachal Pradesh, right, in Upper Himalayas, in the Lahul and Spiti district of Himachal Pradesh. Right. So from there, after the confluence of Chandra and Bhaga head stream, after that it is known as Chenab. Right. Now it is the largest tributary of Indus. Okay, in up in its upper reaches, it is known as Chandra Bhaga because of, it is formed of two head streams. Right, it flows through Jammu Kashmir into the plains of Punjab in Pakistan. Right, so Chenab River it is flowing in Himachal Pradesh, it is flowing in Jammu Kashmir region also, and then it enters in the Punjab region in Pakistan. So the waters of Chenab are allocated to Pakistan under the terms of Indus Water Treaty. Now, in 1960, Indus Water Treaty was signed between India and Pakistan to share the water of Indus and its tributary. Right now, as per this, this Indus, Jhelum, and Chenab. These waters were the waters of these rivers were allocated to Pakistan, but uh, the waters of Ravi, Bias, and Satluj, the, the these three river water were allocated to India, right? So that's why I have told you. See, this is Chena. You can see it here. In, uh, it's it's originating from Himachal Pradesh. So initially, it's known as Chandra Bhaga. Then it flows in Jammu Kashmir. Then it it enters this Pakistan region of um, Punjab region of Pakistan. Okay. Um, then Baglihar Dam has been constructed on this river. Then this river, uh, in this on this river, there is this world's highest railway bridge, uh, that is uh, named Chenab Bridge, that is also being constructed. Okay. Now the next river in the Panjanath system is Jhelum. It's a tributary of Chenab River, and it has a total length of 813 kilometer. Right. You need not remember the length, but definitely you need to remember that Jhelum is a tributary of Chenab River. Now you can see it here how it's a tributary of Chenab. See, this is Jhelum. Right, it's joining Chenab. This one is Chenab, and Jhelum. This is Jhelum. So it's joining Chenab. Okay. So uh, Jhelum, uh, it rises from a spring at Verinag, situated at the foot of Pir Panjal ranges. Right, Pir Panjal. It's a part of Middle Himalayas in the uh, in Jammu Kashmir region. Okay. And Kishan Ganga. It is also known as Neelam River. So it's the largest tributary of Jhelum. Right, so Kishan Ganga, a tributary of Jhelum, that is in Jammu Kashmir only. Right, and this whole Kashmir Valley, it lies on this Jhelum River only. Okay, and this Jhelum is a tributary of Chenab River. Okay, now it ends in a confluence with Chenab in Pakistan. So as such, the confluence of uh, Jhelum and Chenab, Chenab is in Pakistan. You can see it here, here. Right, so it's in Pakistan. Okay, now the next one is uh, the Chenab merges with Satluj to form the Panjnad River which joins the Indus River at Mithan Court. So as such, the Panjnad River is formed of five rivers, right? And then it joins the Indus River, the Panjnad River, it joins the Indus at Mithan Court, right? And uh, as I already told you, the waters of Jhelum, Indus and Chenab, they are allocated to Pakistan under Indus Water Treaty. And Ravi, Bias and Satluj, they are allocated to India, right? Kishan Ganga, then it's a tributary of uh, Jhelum, it's also known as Neelam River. It is originating in Kargil district of Jammu Kashmir, right? Now it enters Pakistan near LOC, that is line of control, and it runs west till it meets the Jhelum River. It is also called Neelam, uh, maybe because of its sky cold water or due to the precious stone ruby or Neelam that is found in this uh, in this particular river, right? And it is famous for its for its ice cold water and trout fish, right? So as I told you that uh, Indus River is famous for its for its uh, blind dolphin, right? Similarly, this uh, this uh, Neelam River, this is Kishan Ganga, or Neelam River, and this is Jhelum. This Kishan Ganga River is famous for its ice cold water and trout fish. Okay. 
Uh, now the next one is the Ravi. Now Ravi it originates in the Dholadhar range that is again a part of middle Himalayas in the Chamba district of Himachal Pradesh. Okay, it is a perennial river right it flows northwesterly, uh, northwesterly so as such it is originating in Himachal Pradesh. Then uh, as I told you earlier also that the waters of Ravi it are, uh, are allocated to India under Indus Water Treaty and the major multipurpose project built on this is Ranjit Sagar Dam or it is also known as Thain Dam because, uh, uh, because it is after the name of the village. Okay, and Chamba town it is situated on the right bank of this river. So as such the origin is Himachal Pradesh, then uh, it is a perennial river, then uh, the waters are allocated to India, then Ranjit Sagar Dam are on Ravi river. Okay, then the next one is Satluj. Now Satluj is an antecedent river, it is also a transboundary river. Why? Because it is not originating in India, it is originating uh, from this Rakkas lake, right. Uh, so, uh, it, it, is it is originating beyond the Indian borders in the southern slopes of Kalash mountain near Lake Mansarovar. Near Mansarovar lake, there is a, another lake that is Rakas lake. So, as such, it is originating from this lake. Okay, And it enters India and Himachal Pradesh at Shipkila Pass. right? And it flows in the southwesterly direction through these uh, districts like Kinnor, Shimla, Kullu, Sol Solan, Mandi and Bilaspur districts of Himachal Pradesh state. Okay, then it leaves Himachal Pradesh and it enters Punjab in India, right? At Bhakra. So here Bhakra Nangal Dam, it is situated on Satluj River. Okay, so it's constructed on this river. Okay, you can see the course of the river in the image. Uh, it's like this. Uh, Satluj River, see, see this one. From uh, Rakas Lake, then it is entering through Shipkila Pass. This is Shipkila Pass. It is entering in Himachal Pradesh. Then it is entering in Punjab. Now here we have the Bhakra Nangal Dam on in Punjab state. Right, and then Bias, Bias River is a tributary of Satluj. So Bias uh, River, it is meeting Satluj at Harike in Punjab only. And then this river flows in Pakistan. And then here we have the Mitan Court, where all the five rivers, that is Panjnath, right, that is meeting. Okay, and then this we the, these pan, this Panjnath it actually meets Indus River. Okay, at Mitan Court. Clear. So Ravi Satluj we have done right. Then waters of this are allocated to India under Indus Water Treaty that I have already discussed. Then Napta Jakri Dam that is on uh, Satluj River. Okay. Now let's discuss the uh, the last one that is Bias River. It's an important river system or uh, river, river of Indus River system, right? It and it it originates from Rotang Pass in Himachal Pradesh. So again, Ravi, Chambal, uh, so not Chambal, sorry, uh, Ravi, Chenab, then Bias, they all are originating from Himachal Pradesh only. Okay, Satluj, it is originating in Tibet. Okay, so river before entering Pakistan, it merges with Satluj River at Harike Patan in Punjab. That's what I told you. Bias as such is a tributary of Satluj because it joins Satluj in Harike in Punjab, right? So this is the total length, right? And river covers 256 kilometers through Himachal Pradesh. The length you need not remember. Then the tourist resorts of Manali is situated on the bank of uh, Bias River. Okay, so this is Bias, then Satluj we have done, then uh, Ravi, then Kishanganga that is a tributary of Jhelum, then uh, Chenab that is the largest tributary of Indus, then a small left bank tributary was Zaskar. Okay, so we have discussed Zaskar and Panjnath. Okay, so this was Zaskar river, then we have discussed Jhelum, Kishanganga, Chenab, Ravi, Bias and Satluj and then this is the Panjnath river right and it joins Indus at Mithanko. Okay, and then this whole Indus, it drains in Arabian Sea near port city of Karachi. Okay, thank you. Hello everyone. Uh, so today we will be discussing about Ganga river system, one of the most important river system in India. Uh, its various tributaries, right. I am Bhumika Saini. I have done my engineering from NIT Jaipur. You can follow me on Unacademy by following this link. Unacademy courses are free of cost, but if you like the course, you can pay an optional fee by following the contribute link on Unacademy. Now let's discuss about Ganga first, then we'll discuss about the tributaries of Ganga. Now Ganga river is formed from six head streams and their five confluences. You can see it here, these are the six head streams and the five confluences that we'll study uh, in the next slide. Now uh, the two head streams of Ganga, first of all it is Bhagirathi and then it is Alaknanda, right? So Bhagirathi, the source stream of river Ganga, it rises at the foot of Gangotri glacier at Gomuk. So it's not the Ganga but it's Bhagirathi that is originating from Gangotri glacier at Gomuk, right? Now these are the important uh, centers on river Ganga, on the banks of river Ganga, Haridwar, Rishikesh, Kanpur, Kanoj, Allahabad, Varanasi, Patna, Ghazipur, Bhagalpur, Mirzapur, Baksar, these are all important towns. They are in uh, Uttarakhand, uh, UP and Bihar region, 
ओके नाउ दे आर द टू दे आर टू मेजर बैरेजेस ऑन गंगा रिवर वन इज एट हरिद्वार एंड द अदर वन इज एट फरक्का दैट इज द फरक्का बैरेज इन वेस्ट बंगाल ओके नाउ दीज आर द वेरियस कॉन्फ्लुएंसेज और प्रयाग इन इन द अपर कोर्स ऑफ रिवर गंगा फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द हेड स्ट्रीम ऑफ रिवर गंगा दैट इज अलकनंदा राइट इट जॉइंस धौली गंगा एट विष्णु प्रयाग सो अलकनंदा द कॉन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ अलकनंदा एंड धौली गंगा इज नोन एज विष्णु प्रयाग देन द कॉन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ अनक अलकनंदा विथ नंदाकनी राइट इट इज नोन एज नंद प्रयाग सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल विष्णु प्रयाग इज फॉर्म देन नंद प्रयाग इज फॉर्म देन कर्ण प्रयाग इज फॉर्म वेन अलकनंदा इज जॉइंट बाय रिवर पिंडर राइट पिंडर रिवर इट ओरिजिनेट्स फ्रॉम पिंडर ग्लेशियर ओके इन उत्तराखंड देन आफ्टर कर्ण प्रयाग रुद्र प्रयाग इज फॉर्म नाउ रुद्र प्रयाग इज द कॉन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ रिवर अलकनंदा विथ मंदाकनी राइट सो एट एट दिस कॉन्फ्लुएंस दिस इज नोन एज रुद्र प्रयाग देन आफ्टर रुद्र प्रयाग वेन अलकनंदा इज जॉइंट बाय रिवर भागीरथी इट इज नोन एज देव प्रयाग सो दिस इज इन ऑर्डर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल विष्णु प्रयाग इज फॉर्म देन नंद प्रयाग देन कर्ण प्रयाग इज फॉर्म देन रुद्र प्रयाग एंड देन लेटर देव प्रयाग सो दीज आर ऑल द फाइव प्रयाग्स ओके Now these are the Ganga tributaries. So Ganga tributaries, uh, left bank tributaries. First of all, it's Ram Ganga. It's in Uttarakhand. Then uh, uh, Gomti in UP, Khagra. Then uh, Rapti River. Then Gandak. Then Budi Gandak and Kosi. All these are left bank tributaries. Then right bank tributaries include Yamuna. We've already discussed Yamuna uh, river system in another lesson. Then Son River. It further has two tributaries. That is Rihand and North Coil. Okay. So this is whole Ganga river system. you can see it in this image now these are all the left bank tributaries the this one is ram ganga then gomti then ghaggar right then rapti then gandak then budi gandak then kosi right so this is all these are all left bank tributaries these are the two head streams bhagirathi and alaknanda now these are the left uh, these are the right bank tributaries uh, uh, it's mainly it's son right and son is uh, further uh, joined by two rivers this one is rihand and this is north coal so this is the Son River that has two further tributaries, Rihand and North Coal. So this is the whole Ganga River system. Okay. Now let's discuss the uh, two head streams. First of all, of Ganga, one is Alaknanda and the second one is Bhagirathi. Right. So it is one of the head streams of Ganga. It rises at the feet of Satopant Glacier in Uttarakhand. Right. There is a lake, Satopant Lake, uh, uh, which is formed at the foot of this Satopant Glacier. Right. From that particular glacier, uh, this Alaknanda River. is originating right now it meets bhagirathi river at dev prayag this we have already discussed in prayag after which it is called ganga so uh, in uttarakhand when the, uh, after the confluence of bhagirathi and alaknanda at dev prayag then it is known as ganga right before that it is not known as ganga okay so its main tributaries are mandakini nandakini pinder this we already discussed all these um, prayag which we just now discussed dholi uh, uh, ganga then nandakini uh, pinder mandakini right these are all the Uh, you can say these are the tributaries of Alaknanda. Okay, then uh, it drains uh, part of these districts in Uttarakhand that is Tehri, Pori district, Chamoli district in Uttarakhand, right? And uh, Badrinath and the this uh, natural spring that is it is lying along the banks of Alaknanda, right? So remember, Badrinath is along the banks of Alaknanda River, right? And uh, this is all about Alaknanda originating from Satopant Glacier, right? Now let's discuss the second head stream of Ganga that is. भागीरथी नाउ दिस भागीरथी इज ओरिजिनेटिंग फ्रॉम गंगोत्री ग्लेशियर एट गोमुख इन उत्तर काशी डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ उत्तराखंड राइट नाउ दिस होल अपर कैचमेंट एरिया इज ग्लेशिएटेड बिकॉज बिकॉज ऑफ द एल्टीट्यूड मेनली राइट हेयर वी हैव द ग्रेट हिमालयाज सो द अपर कैचमेंट ऑफ द रिवर इज ग्लेशिएटेड नाउ इट इज फॉर्मिंग स्पेक्टैकुलर गॉजेज बिकॉज इट इज कटिंग दिस होल हिमालयन रेंजेस राइट इन द मिडल कोर्स देन वी हैव दिस गंगोत्री उत्तर काशी तेहरी दीज आर द इम्पॉर्टेंट सेटलमेंट्स अलॉन्ग दिस रिवर ओके एंड तेहरी डैम इज कंस्ट्रक्टेड ऑन भागीरथी रिवर okay so this is uh, the key these are the key points of bhagirathi river so we have discussed the two head stream alaknanda and bhagirathi of ganga okay and we have discussed all the five prayag okay now let's discuss the left bank tributaries of river ganga okay so first is ram ganga you can see it in this image that uh, is yes, this one uh this these are the two head streams then after dev prayag it is known as ganga right now this one is ram ganga this one the second one right this one is ram ganga uh, now this is originating in uttarakhand right it drains this southwestern kumau uh, uh, this region in uttarakhand then this particular river it is flowing through corbett national park right in in the doon valley it is flowing through corbett national park then it finally meets ganga near kanauj so the origin is in uttarakhand but it is meeting ganga in up uh, and near a city known as kanauj right then bareilly city is situated on its bank okay so this is an important tributary ram ganga 
okay now the next one is gomti this is this is originating from gomat tal in pilibit in up now pilibit is one of the northernmost district in up right so it is originating from gomat tal in pilibit in up right the earlier one ram ganga was originating in uttarakhand and draining in up but this is originating in up and it is draining in up only so it is meeting the ganga in uh, gazipur gazipur in up so cities of lucknow remember lucknow the capital city of up it is on gomti river lakhimpur kheri sultanpur jaunpur all these important uh, cities these are on the banks of gomti river and the river it cuts the jaunpur city into equal halves and uh, and it, it is actually becoming a bit more wider in jaunpur so you can see the course of uh, gomti river this one is gomti right it is originating just at the northern end of up that is in pilibhit district then it is uh, flowing in this way right and lucknow jaunpur these are all uh, lakhimpur kheri these are all along this along the banks of river gomti and it is joining uh, ganga river in gazipur in up right clear so uh, alaknanda bhagirathi ram ganga gomti we have done right now let's discuss another uh, tributary that is ghaggar now it is a trans boundary perennial river trans boundary means it is actually it is not originating in india it is originating from tibetan plateau near lake mansarovar right so it is originating from tibetan plateau near lake mansarovar it cuts through himalayas in nepal and is joined by sharda river so sharda is a tributary of ghaggar right and this is an antecedent river okay so it is uh, joined by sharda river at brahmagat in india and it joins ganga at chapra in bihar right so originating in lake mans near lake mansarovar and tibetan plateau then it is cutting this himalayas in nepal then it is entering up region and where a tributary of ghaggar sharda it uh, is joining at brahmagat in india then it joins ganga at chapra in bihar so as such this is flowing from up and bihar in india you can see the image here uh, this one ghaggar see this one uh, it's originating somewhere here and it is cutting across this nepal region right and then it is uh, draining this up region and it is joining ganga at chapra in uh, bihar right now this one is sharda a, a small tributary of ghaggar river okay yes uh, let's discuss the sharda it originates from great himalayas in uh, uttarakhand right in pithorgarh district of uttarakhand it is named as river mahakali in nepal that is not that that much relevant but uh, this river borders the nepal and uttarakhand region right and uh, mahakali as it enters into the plains in india that is mahakali the same river is known as river mahakali in nepal as it enters the plains in india it is known as sharda right and thereafter it meets ghaggar where it is meeting it is meeting at brahmagat in india okay so this is about sharda okay uh, so till now we have discussed about the the first of all you discuss uh, bhagirathi and alaknanda the two head streams of river ganga then we have discussed about ram ganga we have discussed about gomti we have discussed about ghagra uh, or ghaggar uh, and uh, its tributary that is uh, sharda river right we'll discuss the other remaining tributaries in the next lesson okay thank you hello everyone this is part 2 series of ganga river system i am bhumika saini i have done my engineering from nit jaipur you can follow me on an academy by following this link an academy courses are free of cost but if you like the course you can pay an optional fee by following the contribute link on an academy now uh, uh, the basic about ganga river system we had already discussed in the last lesson that it is formed of six head streams there are five confluences i hope you remember we have already discussed vishnu prayag all these uh, five prayag nand prayag karna prayag rudra prayag and finally dev prayag okay so we have already discussed about the uh, five confluences and we have discussed about the two head streams that is bhagirathi and alaknanda right these are all major centers and that are located on the banks of river ganga right then we had discussed about the ganga tributaries that is the left bank and right bank in the last lesson we had already discussed about ram ganga gomti and ghaggar now we'll be discussing about the remaining left bank tributaries that is rapti uh, gandak budi gandak kosi and the right bank tributaries yamuna i have already covered in another lesson uh, we'll here we'll discuss about the son as a right bank tributary of ganga and the two tributaries of son that is rihan and north kor okay so this is the image of uh, all the uh, tributaries the left bank and the right bank of ganga okay so let's start with rapti the rapti rises uh, mainly from uh, western uh, the western himalayas that is in the dholagiri himalayas and it it's actually between the dholagiri himalayas and the mahabharat range in nepal right so it's between these two ranges that this rapti river rises you can see it here this is rapti river this one right so this is uh, the origin point of rapti river 
okay now the main stream of this river rises as a spring in the southern slopes of lower himalayas okay and but the, uh, the uh, a unique feature of rapti river is that it leads to recurrent floods right that's why it is known as gorakhpur sorrow as we call kosi as the sorrow of bihar similarly rapti is known as uh, sorrow of gorakhpur or gorakhpur sorrow because this rapti river if you see it here here we have gorakhpur it it causes recurrent floods in this region so as such rapti is originating here and then it is entering india and here it is leading to recurrent floods okay then the next river that we have in ganga river system is the gandak river now it is formed by the union of kali and trisuli rivers so these two are head streams of gandak river right and these two rivers they rise in the great himalayan range in nepal if you again see this image now this is gandak river this is the origin right and then it is flowing in india okay and it is it is entering it is joining bihar it is joining uh, ganga in bihar right this is the course of river gandak in nepal then india in bihar and then here uh near patna it is joining um, uh, river ganga okay so it enters ganga river opposite patna in a place in a place called sonpur okay then the upper catchment area here it is uh, bleak and desolate as it lies in the rain shadow area of himalayan range so here this particular region is devoid of vegetation the upper catchment area okay so this is gandak rising in nepal the, there are two head stream then it is joining ganga river near patna okay and the catchment area especially the upper catchment is devoid of vegetation okay now there is another small river budi gandak that runs parallel to gandak you can see it here uh, this one is gandak then this is budi gandak it is running parallel to gandak right it's mainly in bihar so you can see it here originates in the district of west champaran district of bihar then it flows parallel to and east of gandak river in an old channel that is why it is known as budi gandak right and samastipur uh, uh, city it is situated on uh, this particular budi gandak river right so this is mainly in it's originating in bihar only in the west champaran district the course whole course is in bihar it is joining ganga in bihar only right and samastipur is located on budi gandak so a small uh, river parallel to gandak that is budi gandak right and uh, because of its old channel it is known as budi gandak now the uh, one of the important tributary of uh, ganga is kosi right now it is also known as sapt kosi because it is formed uh, from seven himalayan tributaries right it is formed from seven head streams uh, some of the uh, head streams are arun son son kosi uh this uh, the, these are the different names of the head streams of uh, kosi and that is why it is known as sapt kosi right for its seven himalayan tributaries now it is an antecedent river right remember we have discussed that indus was an antecedent indus is an antecedent river satluj brahmaputra kosi all these are antecedent river plus this is transboundary river because it is originating not in india it is originating in in nepal region you can see it here in the himalayas it is originating this this one right so this one is the kosi right so it's actually flowing th mainly through the nepal region it catches a number of tributaries that is why it is known as sapt kosi then it enters bihar right so as it enters the plain region in bihar it leads to flooding that is why it is known as sorrow of bihar so uh, mount everest and kanchenjunga are in the kosi catchment area right so the streams from mount everest and kanchenjunga they are actually uh, adding their water in the kosi river and because of its unstable nature right its unstable nature as it enters in the plain region of bihar it leads to heavy silt right and it carry uh, it it carries actually heavy silt during the monsoon season and once the silt is deposited it changes its course that is why the frequent change in course uh, leads to unstable nature of kosi river now this is the re reason for causing uh, recurrent floods and that is why it is known as sorrow of bihar okay so this is uh, another uh, tributary of river ganga now let's discuss uh, the uh, tributary that is uh, the right bank tributaries of river ganga all the left bank tributaries we have discussed right now let's discuss the right bank tributary of ganga so we are discussing now the son river yamuna river we have already discussed and in son we will be discussing rihan then north coil further which are the tributaries of son river okay so son it originates in amarkantak in mp just east of the origin point of narmada river right so from amarkantak plateau both the narmada and son they are originating right so um, just east of the narmada origin we have the uh, the origin point of uh, son river now it flows through up first it is originating in mp then it is flowing through up then it is flowing in jharkhand then bihar and then it joins river ganga near patna right so uh, gandak river is also joining river ganga near patna son river is also joining river ganga near patna now its chief tributaries are rihan and north coil 
right and this particular river is largely forested and sparsely populated right so this is mainly forested region okay now it has two tributaries that is rihand and north kohl so let's discuss each rihand rises in chatisgarh remember rihand it is rising in chatisgarh and north kohl it is rising in jharkhand okay so rihand it is rising in chatisgarh it flows north in sonbhadra district of up right so rihand it is uh, flowing through this district of up and then uh, it's it's the place it's the district where it is joining the son river right then rihan dam it is constructed across the rihan river and the name of the reservoir the name of the reservoir is govind ballabh pant sagar okay so the name of the dam is rihan dam because it is constructed across rihan river and it is used for hydro power generation and the reservoir name behind the dam is govind ballabh pant sagar right so this is about uh, rihan river rising in uh, chatisgarh then uh, joining river son in up right then the next one is north kohl river rises in jharkhand region in the rachi plateau right uh, palamu is a district in jharkhand right then north kohl along with its tributary it meanders through the northern part of betla national park so remember this this is an important part because north kohl it actually passes through this betla national park okay so this is about the ganga river system we have already discussed uh, the other tributaries Ra ram ganga gomti ghaggar rapti gandak budi gandak and kosi right and the right bank tributaries yamuna in a separate lesson we have discussed and son this we have discussed in this lesson son and son and the two tributaries of son that is rihan and north kohl okay so this is all about ganga river system thank you hello everyone in this lesson we'll be discussing a major tributary of river ganga that is yamuna right and the left and the right bank tributaries of yamuna river system i am bhumika saini i have done my engineering from nit jaipur you can follow me on an academy by following this link an academy courses are free of cost but if you like the course you can pay an optional fee by following contribute link on an academy now let's study about yamuna and then we'll study about its uh, tributaries so this yamuna river it originates from yamnotri glacier on the western side of uh, gangotri glacier there is another glacier that is yamnotri glacier on the southwestern slopes of bandar punch peak right this peak is in masuri range uh, of lower himalayas right so this uh, from this particular glacier yamuna is originating now this yamuna river it uh, it flows across the uh, these uh, uh, states like uttarakhand first of all then it flows through himachal pradesh then haryana then it enters delhi region and it then enters in up and merges with ganga in alabad in alabad we have a triveni sangam right then uh, largest tributary of ganga in the northern plains this uh, yamuna river is the largest tributary of ganga then the cities of bagpat uh, delhi noida mathura agra firozabad itawa hamirpur alabad they all lie on the banks of river yamuna so these are the important centers on its bank okay now this is yamuna river system so here we have yamnotri glacier right it is flowing from uttarakhand then himachal pradesh then haryana delhi then up and this one is alabad right so these are the main tributaries you can see it here this one the main tributary that is chambal then we have sindh then we have betwa and then kane now chambal further has uh, a few tributaries like banas kali sindh parvati right then uh, betwa also has one of the small tributary that is dasan so these this whole is the yamuna river system okay so yamuna tributaries are chambal sindh betwa and kane then chambal further has tributaries like banas kali sindh parvati then betwa further has tributary dasan okay so we'll discuss each of these tributaries and their further these tributaries right so let's first discuss chambal now chambal is also known as charmavati right this approximately 960 km long uh, river it originates from janpao hills in vindhyan range right so as such the originating state is madhya pradesh okay now it flows uh, southwest of mo uh, in indore district in madhya pradesh okay so this is the origin point then uh, a number of dams are there in rajasthan region uh, are built on this chambal river right for example gandhi sagar dam rana pratap sagar dam jawahar sagar dam kota barrage dam right so uh, this is mainly about chambal now for the, the tributaries of chambal that is as we have discussed here the three tributaries banas kali sindh and parvati so let's discuss them banas this is also known as one ki aasha or hope of forest 
originates in Aravli range. So this particular uh, tributary of Chambal, the entire course right from origin till, its, uh, till it joins river Chambal, its entire course is in Rajasthan only. So its origin point is in Aravli in Rajasaman district, that's a district near Udaipur district in Rajasthan, in the southern part of Rajasthan. And the cities of Nadwara, Jaunpur, Tong, they all lie on this river, right? So entire course is in Rajasthan only. Then the second uh, tributary of Chambal, remember we are discussing the tributary of Chambal, right? Chambal is the tributary of Yamuna then. And then uh, the uh, another tributary is Kalisan. It flows in Malwa region of MP that joins Chambal near Savai Madhupur in Rajasthan, right? So this origin is in Madhya Pradesh. Then it joins Chambal in uh, Rajasthan. You can see in this image, see, this is Chambal River. It's origin originating from Janpao Hills. It is flowing through Madhya Pradesh, then Rajasthan, and then uh, joining Yamuna in UP. This is Banas. Its entire course is in Rajasthan. This one is Kali Sindh and this one is Parvati. Okay. So this is originating in MP. Okay. Originating in MP and joining in Rajasthan near Savai Madhupur. That's another district of Rajasthan. Okay. Then the third one Parvati. It is again an, another tributary of Chambal. It is uh, originating in the Vindhyan range in Madhya Pradesh. Right. Flows through the southern part of Rajasthan. That is Kota district, Jhalawa district uh, in Rajasthan. Right. So it joins the right bank of Chambal and the city of Guna. It lies on it. That's a city in MP. You can see it here. This one. Right. So it, it joins in Rajasthan. Okay. Then let's discuss another tributaries of Yamuna. We have discussed Chambal and we have discussed the tributaries of Chambal. Now we are discussing another tributary of Yamuna that is Sindh. So it originates in Malwa Plateau in Vidisha district. Again, it, it's an MP, right? It flows along these districts. That is, it flows in the north and northeastern direction. So first it flows northwards and then it shifts northeast. So it, it actually crosses through Guna, Ashok Nagar, Shivpuri, Datya, Gwalior, Bind. These are all districts in Madhya Pradesh, right? And it uh, joins Yamuna River in UP. There is another district in UP that is Itawa. So uh, this particular uh, uh, Itawa city is on Yamuna River only, right? And Sindh is uh, actually joining Yamuna in this Itawa district. So it flows through Madhya Pradesh because its origin is in Madhya Pradesh. And I told you it is flowing through all these uh, districts. Then it enters Yamuna, uh, it enters UP and it joins Yamuna in Itawa district in UP. Okay, then the third uh, tributary of Ch uh, Yamuna is Betwa. We have discussed Chambal, we have discussed Sindh. Now the third one is Betwa. This is also called as Vitravati and it rises in Vindhyan range. Again, uh, most of the rivers I told you, most of the tributaries of Yamuna, right, all these are right bank tributaries. They are originating in Madhya Pradesh and most of them are originating in Vindhyan range, right. Then the confluence of Betwa and Yamuna, it takes place in Hamirpur town, right. As we have discussed that the confluence of Sindh and Yamuna takes place in Etawa. Right. Similarly, confluence of Betwa and Yamuna it takes place in Hamirpur town in Uttar Pradesh. Right. Now, Dasan is the is one of the main tributary, and Rajgarh Dam is located on the river. You can see this river. See this one. This is Betwa, originating from Indian Range. Right. Then it is uh, joining its Yamuna in. This is one is Itawa district. Uh, sorry, uh, this one is. Uh, um, uh, this is Itawa district. This is Hamirpur. Right. So, Betwa is joining Yamuna in Hamirpur. Right. Then this is one another right bank tributary of Betwa that is Dasan. And then the last one we have is Kane. Okay. So, let's discuss them in detail. We have discussed Betwa. Okay. Then a um, tributary of Betwa is Dasan. It's a right bank tributary of Betwa. I've shown you in the image. It originates. Again, it is originating in Madhya Pradesh. So, most of the rivers uh, of the Yamuna River Basin. Right, most of the river of Yamuna River Basin they are originating in Madhya Pradesh. Uh, one of the exception was uh, Banas. I told you it entirely lies in Rajasthan. Right, then uh, flows through Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh. So it originates in Madhya Pradesh. Then it flows northward and it joins uh, this river, River Betwa. Okay, so Dashan River is a tributary of Betwa River. Okay, then the last river that is Kane. It originates from slope of Kaimur Range in Jabalpur. Again. Uh, originating in Madhya Pradesh, then it merged with Yamuna near Fatehpur in UP, right? So, Kane is merging uh, uh, with Yamuna near Fatehpur, right? Uh, then it river, this river, it's important that this river passes through a national park that is Penna National Park. So, remember, because sometimes they ask question on this, right, related to national park. So, Kane River is passing through Penna National Park, okay? So, these are the main rivers that we have done. 
चंबल देन इट्स थ्री ट्रिब्यूटरीज बनास काली सिंध पार्वती देन वी डिस्कस सिंध इट इज़ ज्वाइनिंग यमुना इन इटावा डिस्ट्रिक्ट देन वी डिस्कस बेटवा इट इज़ ज्वाइनिंग यमुना इन हमीरपुर टाउन देन वी डिस्कस केन इट इज़ ज्वाइनिंग इन दिस अगेन इन इन यूपी राइट देन वी हैव डिस्कस ऑल दीज थ्री ट्रिब्यूटरीज ऑफ चंबल वी डिस्कस अबाउट दस एन अगेन अ राइट बैंक ट्रिब्यूटरी ऑफ बेटवा सो दिस इज़ द होल यमुना रिवर सिस्टम राइट यमुना फ्राम ओरिजिनेटिंग फ्राम यमुनोत्री एंड फ्लोइंग थ्रू ऑल दीज स्टेट्स एंड ज्वाइनिंग गंगा एट अलाहाबाद ओके सो दिस इज़ अबाउट यमुना रिवर सिस्टम थैंक यू हेलो एवरी वन इन दिस लेसन वील बी डिस्कसिंग द डिटेल्स अबाउट ब्रह्मपुत्रा रिवर सिस्टम दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ हिमालयन रिवर सिस्टम ओनली राइट आई एम भूमिका सैनी आई हैव डन माई इंजीनियरिंग फ्रॉम एन आई टी जयपुर यू कैन फॉलो मी ऑन अन अकेडमी बाई फॉलोइंग दिस लिंक अन अकेडमी कोर्सेज आर फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट बट इफ यू लाइक द कोर्स यू कैन पे एन ऑप्शनल फी बाई फॉलोइंग द कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट लिंक ऑन अन अकेडमी नाउ दिस इज द होल ब्रह्मपुत्र रिवर सिस्टम इट एक्चुअली इट ओरिजिनेट्स इन टिबेट it is known as yalung sangpo in tibet and then it enters in the name of dihang in arunachal pradesh then it is known as brahmaputra in assam and these are the right bank and the left bank tributaries of brahmaputra and then it flows in uh, bangladesh as jamuna and it uh, it joins ganga and it forms uh, uh, the greatest or the largest delta of the world that is sundarbans delta okay Uh, so let's discuss in detail about brahmaputra and its tributaries so brahmaputra source is the chema yungdung glacier in southwestern tibet as i told you this is the southwestern tibet and uh, from here the glacier named as chema yungdung glacier that is the origin point of brahmaputra it flows as yarlung sangpo river across southern tibet so here it is known as yarlung sangpo sangpo means purifier right and in arunachal pradesh it is known as dihang so it enters in as a in the name of dihang in india right just west of the town of sadia so as a sadia is in assam so from sadia to dubri that is mainly in assam uh, here the uh, the river is known as brahmaputra and just west of the town of sadia the dihang is joined by two main streams lohit and dibang now you can see it here this is dihang right it is joined by dibang and lohit these are the two main uh, two uh, streams after the confluence of dibang and lohit here it is known as brahmaputra okay then it flows through bangladesh as jamuna right so in tibet it is known as yarlung sangpo in uh, arunachal pradesh the same river is known as dihang in assam the same river is known as brahmaputra in bangladesh it is known as jamuna right where it merges with ganga to form a vast delta that is sundarbans the biggest river islands in the world majuli is on the river is on the brahmaputra river and it is in the state of assam so these are river rhine island now the uh, important uh, places on this uh, on the banks of this river are dibrugarh in assam niam uh, niamati tezpur guwahati right these are important urban centers on this river okay so uh, now we'll discuss about the left bank and the right bank tributaries of brahmaputra so left bank includes tansri lohit dibang right and right bank subansri kameng manas and sankur so this is all in order right so let's discuss first the right bank tributary so we'll start with subansri then kameng then manas and then sankosh so about subansri now subansri river is also called as gold river as it is famous for its gold dust so that is why it is known as gold river now it flows through the lower subansri district in arunachal pradesh so this district is named after the river only in arunachal pradesh and it it is famous for this uh, because it offers kayaking opportunities why because it is a very swift river right it flows down the hills so that's why it offers this excellent kayaking opportunities okay you can see the uh, subansri river here um this one right this is subansri river it is flowing through lower subansri district in arunachal pradesh and then it is joining brahmaputra okay next we will study about kameng so subansri then kameng then manas and then sankosh okay um let's discuss about coming now this river originates in tawang district in the eastern himalayan mountains so tawang district is in arunachal pradesh right so it flows through west coming district now again this district is named after the river arunachal pradesh and then it joins brahmaputra and it flows through sonitpur district of assam right now the important part is that these this wildlife sanctuary and kaziranga national park pakui wildlife sanctuary and kaziranga uh, uh, national park these are located near the coming river okay then the third uh, this right bank tributary is manas now this is a trans boundary river why because it originates in bhutan so in the himalayan foothills between southern bhutan and india so as such this is a river which is uh, flowing in bhutan also as well as in india now river flows through bhutan and then uh, through assam right before it joins the mighty brahmaputra river 
okay and uh, this uh, river uh, valley has two major reserve forest areas that is the royal manas national park in bhutan and the contiguous manas wildlife sanctuary in india right so this is the manas river you can see it here this one is manas it is originating in bhutan then it is entering india and this manas uh, national park uh, in bhutan and manas wildlife sanctuary in india are on the banks of this river okay then the uh, third one that is sankosh it rises a uh, fourth one that is sankosh river it rises in bhutan again this river is also rising in bhutan and it empties in brahmaputra in the state of assam you can see it here this is the sankosh river right so both manas and sankosh river they are originating in bhutan and they are entering or they are uh, they are entering in india and they are joining brahmaputra river okay so vansri and kameng were in arunachal pradesh manas and sankosh uh, uh, are originating in bhutan and entering india now the upper catchment of the river is glaciated you can see it here this is whole hilly area that's why the upper catchment is glaciated right the middle and lower coast they have v-shaped valleys right uh, because the river is cutting uh, it is it is um, actually leading to valley deepening right that has been covered by running water the entire catchment of the river is covered with forest now this whole area if you see this whole area this is highly forested area right so these are the main right bank tributaries it enters in the name of dihang then it's subansri kameng manas and sankosh these are the main right bank tributaries of brahmaputra that are joining uh, brahmaputra mainly in this assam region okay now let's discuss the uh, the another river that is tista you can see it here this one tista so it is originating in sikkim and it is joining here uh, uh, this brahmaputra so the river originates from north sikkim at an elevation of 5000 Uh, meters in himalayas now the river then flows past the town of rangpo now this is an important town in uh, in sikkim right and it forms the border between sikkim and west bengal okay then this river flows in west bengal that is through uh, these district of jalpaiguri which is famous which is famous for tea cultivation right and then it enters bangladesh and in bangladesh it finally merges with mighty brahmaputra so as such in india it is flowing through sikkim and then to through west bengal and then it enters bangladesh and in bangladesh it is joining brahmaputra right so this is the river on which there is this uh, conflict between india and bangladesh over the uh, sharing of water of tista river okay so remember this is a tributary of brahmaputra and that too it's a right bank tributary okay now let's discuss the left bank tributaries that is in this we'll be discussing dibang then we'll discuss lohit and then we'll discuss dhansri so let's discuss first dibang now dibang is one of the principal tributaries of brahmaputra river you can see it here this is dibang this is dibang then this is lohit then this is dhansri so these are the three left bank tributaries of brahmaputra now it originates from himalayas close to tibetan border right and then mishmi hills uh, these are found along the upper course of dibang river so as such this river is flowing across these mishmi hills right and it enters the plain area and lower dibang valley district so again this district is known after the river right and this district is in arunachal pradesh so remember this is flowing through mishmi hills then it is flowing through this lower dibang valley district of arunachal pradesh then it is joining brahmaputra right and uh, origin is near this uh, tibetan border okay the next one is lohit now river lohit originates again it is originating in the eastern tibetan region uh, this river this river also flows through mishmi hills and the valley is thickly forested right and now this forest uh, the it range the trees range from alpine uh, vegetation to subtropical vegetation right and this particular area is famous for uh, a large variety of medicinal plants so you can see it here this one is dibang river this is dibang and this one is lohit right okay so these two are uh, left bank tributaries then the last one that is the last left bank tributary is the dhansri now it is the main river of golaghat district of assam and dimapur district of nagaland remember this this river is originating from nagaland right and it is flowing in assam as well as nagaland so there are numerous uh, perennially waterlogged swampy regions associated with this river so you can see it here this river is dhansri this one originating from nagaland entering uh, this golaghat district of assam right and joining it here okay so these are the right bank and these are the left bank tributaries so this is the gist of uh, brahmaputra river that we have studied the left bank dhansri lohit and dibang and the right bank subansri kameng manas and sankosh these two rivers originating in arunachal pradesh these two rivers originating in bhutan and entering india then apart from this we have already studied one more river that is tista river okay that was originating in sikkim right so this is all about the whole brahmaputra river system thank you hello everyone in this lesson we'll be discussing the details of mahanadi river system 
This is one of the Peninsula River system and we will be discussing the left bank and the right bank tributaries of Mahanadi. I am Bhumika Saini. I have done my engineering from NIT Jaipur. You can follow me on Unacademy by following this link. Unacademy courses are free of cost but if you like the course, you can play, uh, pay a voluntary fee by following the contribute link on Unacademy. Now uh, let's study about Mahanadi River. Now this river originates from Amarkantak hills of Bastar Plateau in Chhattisgarh. So the origin origin is from Chhattisgarh, right? Amarkantak hills in the in this Bastar Plateau region. Now this river drains in the Bay of Bengal region, right? And it forms a se several channels before draining into Bay of Bengal. Then uh, these uh, cities like Sambalpur, Kattak, Sonpur, these are the important centers on this river. Okay. Uh, you can see it here. This is Mahanadi River, right? This is uh, it's originating in Chhattisgarh. Then it is flowing along this Odisha region. Then it is draining in Odisha. Okay. Now these are the important tributaries of Mahanadi River: Seonath, Hasdo, Mand, Eeb, Tail, right? So these are the important tributaries of Mahanadi. Now let's study uh, first the Seonath River. So uh, this originates from hills in Chhattisgarh, right? And it flows flows towards northeast. You can see it here. This is it is uh, the origin is in Chhattisgarh. It flows towards northeast region, and this whole river flows in Chhattisgarh only, right? So it feeds the inhabitants and industries of Durg district in Chhattisgarh, right? So this is the uh, area where this is flowing. Then the total length of uh, Shionath River is approximately three forty five kilometer. So this one is Shionath River, okay? Then the second one is uh, Hasdeo River. Okay, now this river again it it also originates from Chhattisgarh uh, Chhattisgarh region. The total length is approximately three thirty three kilometer, and the drainage area is nine eight five six square kilometer. Here in Chhattisgarh, it is flowing through Bilaspur and Korba district. As we have done that in uh, Shionath was flowing through this Durg district. Uh, this Hasdeo is flowing through these district that is Bilaspur and Korba district. Okay, so that's uh, in the northern part of Chhattisgarh. Then along the river, we'll see that there are number of rocks and the, uh, a number of small hills are there in these uh, in the course of Hasdeo River. Right, this is, this whole region is forested. Okay, so this is the second river that again it originates also in Chhattisgarh and it is completely it is uh, draining this Chhattisgarh region, especially the Bilaspur and Korba district. Okay, then the third one, uh, another uh, left bank tributary of Mahanadi River. This also is originating in Chhattisgarh, right? The origin point is again in Chhattisgarh and it joins Mahanadi in Chhattisgarh only before the river reaches Hirakud Dam. Now, this Hirakud Dam is just uh, uh, at the border of Chhattisgarh and Odisha, right? It's actually in Odisha and it, it is on the Mahanadi River. So, just before the uh, this Mahanadi River uh, has this Hirakud Dam, just before it, this Mand River joins Mahanadi in Chandrapur, okay? Uh, now the total length of the river is uh, approximately 240, uh, 241 square kilometer and it drains an area of uh, 5200 square kilometer right now this mand river dam has been constructed in the raigarh district of chhattisgarh i told you this river mand it is originating in chhattisgarh and it is flowing mainly in this raigarh district right of chhattisgarh so uh, a dam has been constructed here so three rivers we have done mand hasdo and shionad all these rivers they are originating in chhattisgarh and they are draining chhattisgarh in this whole chhattisgarh region right so the fourth river now again a left bank tributary of mahanadi eeb right now it is originating in chhattisgarh that is in raigarh district but a major portion of eeb is in odisha right so origin point is chhattisgarh but the major portion is in odisha uh, the length is approximately 252 kilometer and it drains an area of 12447 uh, square kilometer now this valley is famous for its rich coal belt right so that's why in this whole uh, chhattisgarh odisha region where we have this eeb river right there we have the rich coal belt okay so this is again another left bank tributary of mahanadi so 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 far we have discussed shionath hasdeo uh, mand and eeb these all are left bank tributary of mahanadi right and they all are originating in chhattisgarh and this eeb it is also flowing in odisha region Okay, now the right bank tributary. There are two right bank tributary. One is Ong and the other one is Tail, right? So Ong River, it's a right bank tributary of Mahanadi. It flows through Odisha. The origin point is uh, Odisha only, right? And it joins Mahanadi at Sambalpur, that is approximately eleven kilometer upstream of Sonpur, right? Where uh, Tail is also Tail River. That is another right bank tributary. 
it is merging Mahanadi, right? So it drains an area of approximately 5128 square kilometer. So Ong River, that is a right bank tributary. It is uh, originating in Odisha, right? And it is joining Mahanadi at Sambalpur, okay? Now the last river, another right bank tributary of uh, uh, Mahanadi, that is originating in Nabrangpur district. Now this district again is in Orissa, right? This river, it is flowing through, through Kalahandi, Balangi, Sonpur districts of Orissa and it is the second largest river of Orissa, okay? So we have discussed about two uh, right bank tributaries and we have discussed about four left bank tributaries, right? You can see it here, uh, Sionath, Hasdo, Mand, Eeb, these are the right bank tributaries. This one is Sionath, this one is uh, Hasdo, this is Mand and this one is Eeb, right? So Sionath, Hasdo, Mand and Eeb, right? And then we have discussed about uh, two right bank, uh, two uh, right bank tributary, one is Ong and the last one is Tail. Okay, these Ong and Tail, both the uh, both these rivers are originating in Odisha and they are draining this whole Odisha region only. Okay, so this is about Mahanadi River and the whole uh, uh, right bank and the left bank tributaries of Mahanadi. Thank you. Hello everyone, in this lesson we will be discussing an important river of southern India that is Godavari river system, right. I am Bhumika Saini, I have done my engineering from NIT Jaipur. You can follow me on Unacademy by following this link. Unacademy courses are free of cost but if you like the course, you can pay an optional fee by following contribute link on Unacademy. Now let's study about Godavari. This is one of the important river of uh, southern India. This is second largest river in India and it is also known as Dakshin Ganga, right? And uh, because uh, it's very voluminous, similar to Ganga, as we have Ganga in the northern India, uh, similarly we have uh, Dakshin Ganga, that is Godavari in southern India. So it originates in Western Ghats in the Nasik district of Maharashtra, right? So remember, the origin point is Western Ghats. It flows in states of Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, Odisha and Andhra Pradesh. So as such, the whole Godavari river basin that lies in Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, Odisha and Andhra Pradesh. Here, Godavari River Basin means Godavari plus, plus its uh, left and right bank tributaries. Okay, so it passes through all these states. Now, the main cities uh, lying on Godavari is Nasik, Trimbakeshwar, Nanded, Aurangabad, Nagpur, Bhadrachalam, Nizamabad, Rajmundri, Balagad. These are all important centers on the banks of river Godavari. Okay, you can see it here. This is the whole Godavari River originating from Western Ghats. And it is flowing, it is uh, flowing through this Maharashtra region, then Andhra region, right? And this whole basin, it lies in, uh, some part of it lies in Madhya Pradesh, some also draining parts of Karnataka, right, Odisha, etc. Okay? Now, let's study the tributaries of Godavari. Now, the important tributaries of Godavari includes Indravati River, Vain Ganga, Pain Ganga, Vardha River, right? In Vardha River, Pain Ganga and Vain Ganga are finally adding uh, or joining this Vardha River. Then Manjra, then Sabri. Okay, so let's study each in detail. Uh, first, Manjra, it is a right bank tributary of river Godavari, right? And it originates in Balaghat range. Now, this Balaghat range are in Maharashtra, right? Uh, you might be knowing Balaghat, uh, Satmala, Ajanta range, all these ranges are in Maharashtra. So, the origin point of Manjra river is in Balaghat range. Okay, this river flows through Maharashtra, uh, originating from Mar Balaghat range, then some part of it drains Karnataka region and then it finally joins Godavari in Andhra Pradesh region, okay. So this is the course of the river, this is the origin point and this is the, uh, as such you should know that which one is a right bank and left left bank tributary. So Manjara is a right bank tributary. Now the second one uh, we will uh, discuss Pain Ganga, Vain Ganga and Vardha river, right. Uh, first, let's discuss Pain Ganga. This is originating from Ajanta range in Maharashtra, right? The earlier one was originating from Balaghat range in Maharashtra. This one is originating uh, in the Ajanta range in Maharashtra, okay? Then it flows along the state border between Maharashtra and Andhra. So, it's like, first of all, it is originating from Ajanta uh, in Maharashtra. Then it flows along the border between Maharashtra and Andhra Pradesh. And it joins the Vardha river thereafter. Okay, so there are two dams on this river. One is uh, in the upper course of Pain Ganga, that is the, the name is Upper Pain Ganga. And then in the lower course of the Pain Ganga, the name is the Lower P Pain Ganga Dam, right? And it passes through Pain Ganga Wildlife Sanctuary. So it cuts across the century, 
okay so this is about pain ganga river and it is finally joining vardha river this vardha river finally merges with godavari river okay so remember pain ganga and vein ganga which we will be studying next right so pain ganga and vein ganga they are joining vardha river and then vardha river is joining godavari river okay so let's first study vein ganga then we'll discuss vardha river now vein ganga as such the meaning is literally it means arrow of water right now it originates from uh this uh, slopes of mahadev hills that is a part of satpura range right so this one is originating from madhya pradesh pain ganga was originating from ajanta range in maharashtra so this is a, this is from madhya pradesh right so it flows south uh, through madhya pradesh and maharashtra region right and then in maharashtra this vein ganga is joining vardha river right so in maharashtra vein ganga is joining vardha river it drains uh, chandrapur gadchiroli Uh, bhandara gondia nagpur districts of maharashtra so this is the course of uh, vein ganga originating from madhya pradesh and then flowing mainly in maharashtra and in maharashtra it joins vardha river right now let's study vardha river so this river again it is also originating from satpura range from where vein ganga is also originating right so uh, it's like uh, in betul district of madhya pradesh it joins vein ganga right and together after joining of vein ganga with vardha the river is known as pranhita right and this ultimately flows in godavari river right and upper vardha dam has also been built on this vardha river which feeds the amravati city okay so uh, you should be very thorough with this pain ganga uh, actually originating from ajanta range then uh, vein ganga it is originating from madhya pradesh flowing in mp and maharashtra and then vardha river so as such pain ganga vein ganga both joining this vardha river and after joining of vein ganga it is known as pranhita which ultimately flows in godavari river okay clear now the next one is indravati river now this river it is originating from eastern ghats in kalahandi district in odisha remember indravati is in odisha uh, the origin point is in odisha then it flows through this whole bastar uh, district in chatisgarh right so first it is originating in odisha then it is draining this bastar region of chatisgarh right then it forms a boundary between maharashtra and chatisgarh okay and uh, this is also important that uh, famous falls like chitrakoot falls are located on indravati river only plus indravati national park and tiger reserve are also located in this region of chatisgarh from where this indravati is draining so as such first from orissa the originating from orissa then draining this whole bastar region of chatisgarh then it uh, it forms a boundary between maharashtra and chatisgarh right and then finally in maharashtra it is joining uh, godavari river okay then uh, the next one and the last one is sabri now sabri river again it is also originating from eastern ghats in orissa as we have discussed indravati river so these two rivers indravati and sabri which are tributaries of godavari they both are originating from eastern ghats in odisha right now from odisha it is flowing through chatisgarh right then andhra that is andhra pradesh right and then there is a pro, uh, there is a project that is upper kola project located in odisha state and it supplies irrigation and hydropower generation uh, facilities right so th- this particular project is on sabri river okay and this whole basin receives nearly 125 cm annual average rainfall okay so this is about uh, uh, the uh, godavari river system indravati and sabri originating from uh, odisha right draining this chatisgarh region and then joining in maharashtra and andhra pradesh then we discussed about vein ganga pain ganga and vardha river system right and then uh, another right bank tributary that is Man- uh, manjra so it was originating from balaghat range in maharashtra okay so these are the tributaries of godavari and then we have discussed the whole uh, godavari river that is also known as dakshin ganga and you should know the important cities uh, on the banks of the godavari river and which uh, all states are drained by this whole godavari river basin okay thank you Hello everyone. In this lesson, we'll be discussing uh, the details of one of the Peninsula River system, uh, river that is Krishna River system. I am Bhumika Saini. I have done my engineering from NIT Jaipur. You can follow me on Anacademy by following this link. Anacademy courses are free of cost, but if you like the course, you can pay an optional fee by following the contribute link on Anacademy. 
so let's discuss about krishna river now this river it rises in western ghats uh, uh, at mahabaleshwar in satara district in maharashtra and it meets uh, uh, this uh, it drains in bay of bengal in andhra pradesh on the eastern coastal plains now these are the main dams located on krishna river alamati dam uh, sri selam dam nagarjuna sagar dam and prakasham barrage these are the major dams constructed on uh, krishna river now this river it undergoes great fluctuation the flow of the river it undergoes great fluctuation why because the only source of water is uh, the monsoon right unlike in himalayan river system that uh, the the there are two sources of water one is melting of glacier and the other one is uh, uh, monsoon but in the peninsula river system only one source is available so that's why the river flow it undergoes great fluctuation now these are the important urban centers located on the banks of the river especially amravati vijayawada these are important uh, urban centers on uh, this river now these are the left bank and right bank tributaries of uh krishna now uh, this is bhima musi Min- munneru and right banks are koina panchganga dud ganga ghat prabha mal prabha and tungabhadra so this uh, these are the uh, left bank tributaries right these this one uh, bhima musi munneru here we have musi and munneru and these are the right bank tributaries right koina panchganga dud ganga this is the uh, fifth one is ghat prabha then mal prabha then this is tungabhadra okay so let's discuss about bhima first now it originates on the western side of western ghats in maharashtra so it is originating in maharashtra and it is flowing in maharashtra in karnataka and in andhra pradesh right it is one of the most important tributary of krishna river now you can see it here this one is bhima so from maharashtra it is originating then flowing in karnataka and then in andhra okay then musi uh, it is originating in anantgiri hills now this hyderabad city is located on the banks of musi river so here we have osman sagar reservoir and hussein sagar lake so it is constructed across musi river only which is a tributary of krishna so musi river it is also famous for uh, water festivals such as boating days decorated boating contest etc okay then the next one is koina now koina uh, this uh, river is famous for koina dam right this river again it is rising in mahabaleshwar in maharashtra and it is a tributary of krishna now it flows in north south direction you can see it here this one is koina right the first one right it is flowing in the north south direction okay then uh, after uh, this koina river it flows in north south direction it is famous for koina dam and it's uh, it's a small river it's just about 100 meter in width and it is slow flowing flowing river and it joins uh, uh, this krishna river okay then uh, the next one is panchganga now it is formed by four stream uh, that is uh, uh, kasri uh, kumbhi tulsi and bhogavati these are the four head stream after the confluence of these four head stream this river it attains a larger pattern so after receiving the waters of these four tributaries it continues in a larger pattern now from north of kolapur this is in maharashtra it has a wide alluvial plain okay and after developing this plain the river it is uh, resuming its coast eastward so after this it is flowing eastwards and it falls in uh, krishna so you can see the course of um, panchganga river this is um, the third one is panchganga you can see it here this one right and then it joins uh, river krishna okay then the next one is dud ganga it is a right bank tributary of river krishna it is again important river of kolapur district that's uh, that's a district in maharashtra and there is a dam that is important the kalamadi uh, dam it has been built on the river in collaboration with karnataka state so this is dud ganga it is the fourth one you can see it here. this one is dud ganga okay then after that we have ghat prabha and mal prabha and the last one is tungabhadra so let's discuss each of them now let's discuss ghat prabha first it is also originating in western ghats it is flowing eastwards across karnataka and maharashtra right and after that uh, uh, after uh, that it joins this krishna river okay this again a famous tourist attraction that is gokak waterfall it's in belagam district now this distrum district is in karnataka right it's a famous tourist attraction there and this ghat prabha project that is a hydroelectric and irrigation dam across the river so it's in karnataka okay so this one is ghat prabha river this one the fifth one okay then the uh, next one is mal prabha now this again uh, it is uh, originating in karnataka in belgaum district uh, in chayadris that is uh, western ghats only it joins river krishna in uh, ba- uh, bagalkot district in karnataka so it is originating in karnataka and it is joining uh, krishna in karnataka only right then again there is a important dam constructed on this river in belgaum district now this is very important that famous temples especially the badami uh, because uh, it is a world heritage site by unesco so these are located on the banks of this river right so this is mal prabha 
this one right originating in karnataka and joining krishna river in karnataka only and famous unesco world heritage site these are located on uh, this malprabha okay now the next one and the last one that is tunga bhadra now it is formed by confluence of two head streams that is tunga and bhadra so there is a tunga river and there is a bhadra river and after the confluence of these two rivers tunga bhadra river is formed right now it flows down the eastern slope of western ghats in state of karnataka so mainly the river course is in karnataka right and uh, thereafter it is meandering through the plains and it joins krishna in andhra pradesh so it's originating in karnataka it is flowing in this whole karnataka state and then it joins krishna river in andhra pradesh okay now these are the important urban centers on this river especially hospet hampi kurnool so these are major urban centers on this river so this one is tungabhadra river this one right main course is in karnataka and then it drains or it joins river krishna in andhra okay so the, these are all the tributaries uh, this we have done koina we have done panchganga dud ganga ghat prabha mal prabha then this one is bhumi uh, sorry bhima then uh, we after that we have musi then munneru right so these are all the tributaries of river krishna bhima musi munneru and uh, koina panchganga dud ganga ghat prabha mal prabha and tunga vatra okay so this is all about uh, krishna river and its tributaries thank you Hello everyone. In this lesson, we will be discussing another peninsular river, that is Kaveri River system. I am Bhumika Saini. I have done my engineering from NIT Jaipur. You can follow me on an academy by following this link. An academy courses are free of cost, but if you like the course, you can pay an optional fee by following the contribute link on an academy. Now let's discuss about Kaveri. This river is also known as Dakshin Ganga, right, or Ganga of South, and it rises from Tal Kaveri in Brahmagiri Hills. So this is a part of Western Ghats, and the district is Kodagu district of Karnataka. So the river origin is from Karnataka, right? Now it flows through the states of Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. Okay, so as such, origin is in Karnataka, and it is flowing in Tamil Nadu. Uh, so the delta of Kaveri is in Tamil Nadu, and it is forming a very wide delta. This delta is called as Garden of Southern India. Okay, so Dakshin Ganga, then origin point is Tal Kaveri in Western Ghats, flowing through Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, and forms a very wide delta. Now these are the tributaries of Kaveri River. Shimsha River, uh, Hemavati, Akravati, Kabini, Lakshmantirth, Noyal, Amravati, Bhavani. Right? These are all the tributaries of Kaveri. So these are the tributaries. Uh, this one is uh, Shimsha, then uh, Akravati, this is Hemavati, uh, Lakshmantirth, uh, Kabini, uh, then this one is Noyal River, this is Amravati. So let's discuss each of these tributaries in detail. So the first one is Hemavati. Now it is an important tributary of Kaveri River. It rises from Western Ghats, again from Karnataka only, in Chikmagalur. Mangalore district okay so it, it is flowing through Chikmangalur district Hassan district and Mysore district of Karnataka before it joins river Kaveri so origin is in Kaveri and is joining river Kaveri in Karnataka only so this one is Hemavati okay the next tributary is Shimcha now it originates in Tumko district of Karnataka so you will see maximum tributaries of uh, Kaveri river they are originating from Karnataka only right and it is originating in Tumko district of Karnataka uh, this is a famous dam built across the river Shimcha in Tumko district okay now it has a waterfall also um, so this is also important especially the waterfall as well as this dam right now this is also the location of Shimsha hydroelectric project so in this particular Shimsha river it is important for this dam and specifically this hydroelectric project now this is Shimsha river the first one here we have the Shimsha this one this one is the Shimsha river okay now the next one is uh, Akravati river it originates at Nandi hills in Karnataka again this uh, river is originating in Karnataka okay now it flows through Kolar district and Bangalore rural district in Karnataka and this famous Tunchi waterfall on Akravati river it attracts numerous tourists so you will see uh, a number of tributaries of uh, Kaveri uh, this will uh, th these are forming a number of waterfalls then uh, some of them are also used for hydroelectric project as we have discussed in Shimsha river right so uh, this is about Akravati river now you can see where this one uh, this Akravati river is uh, it's the second one that is this one okay so this is Hemavati this is uh, Shimsha this is Akravati okay 
now the next river that is lakshman teerth it, it it's an important river it rises again in karnataka only in brahmagiri range in kodagu district of karnataka and it borders the vayana district of kerala so just at the border of karnataka and kerala this particular river is flowing it flows eastwards and it joins river kaveri in this uh, krishna raj sagar lake okay and uh, this uh, ram teertha is a major tributary of lakshman teertha so you can see this river lakshman teerth that is the third one this one is lakshman teerth okay and ram teerth is a tributary of it and uh, this is also uh, flowing through karnataka okay originating in karnataka and joining river uh, kaveri in krishna raj sagar lake okay now the next one uh, th- uh, these four we have discussed himavati shimsha akravati and lakshman teerth let's discuss the others now kabini this is again uh, it's originating from western ghats only but this particular river is originating in vayanad district of kerala so this is the origin of this is from another state that is kerala now backwaters of kabini reservoirs they are known for their rich wildlife you will find a number of backwaters in kerala so backwaters of uh, this this particular river uh, these are rich in wildlife and it is forming an island known as kuruva island right that is spreading over uh, 520 acres with diverse flora and fauna so it is known for its rich Uh, biodiversity right you can see this uh, kuruva island here see this particular uh, is the flow of kabini river it's from it is the, this is the uh, kerala and here you can see this is kuruva island okay and then uh, here we have karnataka so this whole state is kerala it is originating from kerala it is forming this kuruva island in kerala only and it has a number of uh, backwaters which are known for uh, their rich biodiversity okay so let's discuss the other one that is bhavani it is again a major river in tamil nadu so remember this river kabini is is in kerala actually the origin uh, origin is in kerala okay this the next river bhavani it is in tamil nadu and the other rivers which we have discussed like shimsha himavati etc they were mainly originating in karnataka and flowing in karnataka only right so it's the second largest river in tamil nadu bhavani it is originating from silent national uh, uh, park in kerala so origin point is in kerala and the uh, main course is in tamil nadu right it flows towards tamil nadu it is fed mostly by southwest monsoon that is uh, kerala is getting uh, uh, water from the southwest monsoon only and it is supplemented by northeast monsoon why because it is uh, the main course of this particular river is in tamil nadu right and tamil nadu receives rainfall mainly through northeast monsoon so it is this particular river is getting uh, rainfall both in summers by southwest monsoon and in winters by northeast monsoon right and the main course as i told you the main course is in tamil nadu that is 87% is flowing in tamil nadu it is originating in kerala in this particular national park this is a famous national park silent valley national park in kerala and a uh, very little uh, portion that is 4% is flowing in karnataka so 90% of the rivers water is used for agriculture uh, specifically irrigation okay so th- this is uh, the details of uh, these are the details of bhavani river okay a major river of tamil nadu right then uh, let's discuss another river that is noyal river now this particular river it rises in western ghats in velingiri hills and in uh, that is in tamil nadu so this is rising in tamil nadu the other river bhavani which we have discussed it was rising in kerala but the main course was in tamil nadu that is 87% now this particular noyal river it is rising in tamil nadu only it joins river kaveri in erode district this is in tamil nadu right and the place where it is joining kaveri river it is called noyal right so that place is also called noyal and this river noyal is jo- joining uh, kaveri in erode district in tamil nadu right so now there is a specific feature of this noel river this uh, uh, tributary of kaveri that is the noel river it is uh, it is having a number of tanks right uh, somewhere around 32 tanks are there and these interconnecting tanks they held the water flowing from noel river now you can see it here this is the whole range of tanks right there is a whole range of tank that is the uh, uh, all across this noel river system okay so this particular uh, Uh, this tank system and that to this extensive tank system uh, plus interconnecting tanks that is a special feature of this noel river okay so this river in tamil nadu originating in tamil nadu flowing only in tamil nadu and this has a number of tanks that to interconnecting okay now the next one that is amravati this is the last uh, tributary of uh, kaveri 
it is uh, uh, beginning at just at kerala tamil nadu border right at the bottom of the valley between annamalai hills and palni hills right and specifically it is an indira gandhi uh, wildlife sanctuary and national park so this particular river is originating from here just at the border of kerala tamil nadu okay now it descends in northerly direction through amravati reservoir so these uh, these two the, uh, the amravati reservoir and amravati dam these are uh, on this river right and again this particular river is also used mainly for agriculture activities in tamil nadu and uh, uh, there is one problem in this river that is uh, this since this river is mainly used for industrial processing and uh, for uh, waste disposal so it is severely polluted right uh, a number of industries like textile dyeing and bleaching units are all along the banks of this river that is why this river is severely polluted so this is a problem with this river okay so this is about amravati then we have discussed uh, the noel river and the tank system then we have discussed bhavani river right originating from silent valley but major course in tamil nadu right and it was used for agriculture then kabini river originating in kerala backwaters and kuruva island that we have discussed uh, mainly rich for biodiversity right so these are all the rivers amravati we have discussed noel we have discussed right uh, shimsha akravati hemavati lakshman teertha kabini right okay so this is all about um, uh, the uh, kaveri river system that is also known as dakshin ganga okay thank you hello everyone in this lesson we'll be discussing about the difference between himalayan river system and the peninsular river system i am bhumika saini i have done my engineering from nit jaipur you can follow me on an academy by following this link an academy courses are free of cost but if you like the course you can uh, pay an optional fee by following the contribute link on an academy now uh, as i had already told you that uh, drainage system of india can be classified into himalayan river system that is indus ganga and brahmaputra river system then uh, peninsular rivers mahanadi godavari krishna kaveri narmada and tapi and there are some other small and swift flowing rivers that are originating from western ghats and they are uh, draining in the uh, mainly in the arabian sea okay so uh, let's discuss about the difference between the himalayan rivers and peninsular rivers river now first of all himalayan rivers they have larger channel and they have more valley length right and if we compare it with peninsular rivers they they have comparatively shorter uh, channels and the valley length is also uh, less as compared to the himalayan rivers now this is because if you see these himalayan rivers these are both rain fed and ice fed the volume of water is very large right so the uh, during the summer discharge of water remains continuous right and the rivers show a perennial character but on the contrary if you see in peninsular rivers the rivers here are rain fed right there the melting of glacier is not the source of uh, uh, water for pen, uh, peninsular rivers so during hot summers what happens the discharge of water is discontinuous and they uh, they are non perennial or seasonal right and uh, the another reason uh, the another difference is these are effluent that is himalayan rivers they, uh, in this case water is added by underground sources as well right especially if you see in ganga in brahmaputra so uh, water is added by underground sources as well so that is effluent now in peninsular rivers uh, no water is added by underground sources why because of the hard lithology of peninsula so hardly any underground uh, source of water is there that's why these are effluent okay now uh, in this case himalayan river system the bed rocks are soft sedimentary and easily erodible if you see uh, this whole ganga and brahmaputra the they are actually eroding uh, the fragile rocks of himalayas and they are depositing uh, it in sundarbans delta that is why sundarbans delta is one of the largest delta right because they are easily erodible bed rocks are soft sedimentary and easily erodible on the contrary here in peninsular river system the rivers flow over hard and resistant rock right that is why we say that narmada and tapi they are not able to form delta rather they form estuaries at the mouth of the rivers right so bed rocks here are not easily erodible okay because the peninsular uh, 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 this peninsular plateau of india has resistant rocks okay then in the himalayan rivers the rivers in the upper reaches they develop a maze of streams and streamlets forming a series of stream orders now what happens here in the upper areas uh, the especially in the upper catchment area the rivers ca uh, catch a number of tributaries that is why they develop a maze of streams now if you see in case of ganga uh, a number of uh, tributaries uh, they are joining uh, river ganga and that's why it it leads to 
development of a maze of streams right but on the contrary here in peninsular river system they have poor development of stream order and here mostly the rivers are developing from a single point right so not many rivers will actually not, not many tributaries will join the rivers in the upper catchment area in peninsular rivers okay then uh, they emerge from more than 6000 meters of elevation that is why uh, melting of glacier is one of the source of water of himalayan rivers on the contrary uh, peninsula rivers they are mostly originating from western ghats and they are having low altitude that is ranging between 600 to 1200 meters okay now these are having alluvial channels and in case of peninsula uh, river system in the upper part they have bedrock channel that is hard and resistant rocks and in lower part alluvial channel now if you see in case of krishna and godavari you will find in the lower course they will have Uh, alluvial channels right now himalayan rivers they it is reflected or it seems as if they are in young or early maturity stage why because of uh, that is me mainly being reflected by the velocity they are having high velocity their load carrying capacity is more that is why they are forming big deltas and the volume of water is also more so the river it appears as if it is in young or early maturity stage now in this peninsula river system they are in the old stage why because the volume velocity transport capacity is far less as compared to himalayan river system now the total discharge in case of himalaya himalayan river system as we've already discussed it remains very high why because of the perennial character but in this case they have high discharge during the rainy season mainly because they are only rain fed that is during september to october but very poor discharge during dry seasons right so no source of water is there in, uh, during dry seasons okay now in himalayan river system they are forming v shaped valleys terraces waterfalls cataracts rapids you will see all the river rafting etc it right, is done in mainly in the himalayan rivers right uh in ganga in bias river right because uh, they are having this cataracts rapids etc now peninsular river system they are forming wide u shaped valleys why because peninsula rivers they have actually stopped valley deepening but himalayan river system they are still involved in valley deepening that is why they are forming or they are deepening the valley and that leads to formation of v shaped valleys okay now himalayan rivers they have large flood plains uh, you can uh, easily related to the large gangetic flood plain or brahmaputra flood plain and lateral erosion dominates especially in the middle course uh, for example in up and bihar in in peninsular river system the flood plains are narrow the, the lateral erosion is nearly absent right so flood plains are narrow and senile now here himalayan river system they are forming large deltas as we have already discussed load carrying capacity is very high sediments are fine and greater volume of detrital material is deposited now this has led to the largest uh, delta in the world that is the sundarbans delta okay now uh, in this case of peninsular river system there are narrow and small delta uh this is formed because of volume discharge and transported material this is far less as compared to the himalayan river system okay now in the himalayan rivers their hydroelectric power potential is very high why because uh, as i already told you they are in youth stage or in early maturity stage that's why that leads to this high velocity volume slope gradient etc right uh, and that this is due to, this actually leads to um this high uh, high hydroelectric power potential right and on the contrary the high uh, the hydroelectric power potential is low except few rivers which are draining into arabian sea now just at the starting of the lesson i told you that there are some rivers which are swift and small flowing rivers which originate from western ghats and they drain in arabian sea now these rivers have high hydroelectric power potential but barring these rivers uh, most of the peninsular rivers have generally low hydroelectric power potential as compared to himalayan river system okay now the himalayan river system they have evidences and features of rejuvenation like nick points waterfalls etc right but on the contrary uh, you will hardly find such features of rejuvenation in the peninsular river system and they are mostly static and adjusted to the lithology or the geology of that region okay so this is about the difference of himalayan and uh, peninsular river system okay thank you